Everybody's using Google Calendar, but are we really using it to the extent where we really know what we're doing and maximizing it to meet the needs of our daily crazy schedule? We're probably not. So we're gonna talk about basic buttons and what you first notice. We're gonna talk about the multiple ways of creating an event. I'm gonna show you how to add a guest using email. We're gonna look at the Google Meet link and make sure that you can add that to your calendar invite. We're gonna go over how to reserve a room if you're in a physical location and that's enabled within your organization. I'm gonna show you how to add descriptions into your calendar event. And then I'm gonna show you how to copy an event and assign it to maybe another calendar that you may have. So I'm gonna start by getting into my Google Calendar. And I'm gonna go up to the nine box square or the waffle, and my icon for Google Calendar is right here. Some of the first things that I notice and some of the basic buttons that are on this calendar, I just wanna go over with you. In the top right-hand corner, you can see what I'm logged into Google Chrome with. So I'm in with my work account. And then going to the left, you can see that that nine box square or the waffle is present inside of calendar if I need to get to that. You can then see a drop down menu. And right now it is defaulted to the day of the week. So when I open my calendar, it goes to the specific day. But we can change this to week, month, year. We can go just our schedule if we want to. And then I put in an added on feature of four weeks. So if I only wanted to see the next four weeks, I could click that as well. And then all of them have shortcuts. So D, W, M, and Y. If I hit D, it's going to go to day. If I go to W and press the letter W, it will go to my week. If I press M, it will go to my month. And if I press Y, it will go to the year. So those are shortcuts for us. X, I think, was my four weeks that I set up, and then my schedule is just the letter A. And so that takes me to the schedule view. You can also just use the drop-down menu to go to day, week, month, and year. You don't have to memorize those shortcuts if you don't want to. Next is the settings menu. We'll get more into that into our second video, and I'll put a link up above once that's finished you'll be able to look at more of the in-depth features that Google Calendar offers. Questions, search, we have our current day, and then the button that says today. Now, why do we have that button here? Well, if you start scrolling during the days of the week and you get way ahead of yourself, if I scroll all the way to Sunday, I can easily jump back to the actual day that it is today by clicking this button. I don't have to click a bunch of buttons to get back to the current day of the week. The hamburger menu on the left-hand side, this will hide this side scroll bar. So if you click this and all of a sudden you realize where are all of the options that I used to have on the left-hand side, I know people do that all the time and they say, where did it go? Did I delete it? No, it's this hamburger menu on the left-hand side. So you're able to toggle that left column on or off with that button. And then the last thing that I wanted to go over that you notice right away is the calendar that's here. You can see the month of January and we're able to click on any date and quickly get to that date if we wanted to. So if I wanted to go to Friday, I could quickly and easily click on the 15th, which is Friday, and it will take me there and then click back to the day of the week that it currently is. And you can see that it is circled in blue. So on that calendar, it will always have the day that it currently is highlighted for you. Creating an event. There are two ways that you can create an event in Google Calendar. And one of them is the top left where it says create and it has that colorful plus sign. If you click that button, it will go ahead and just put in a non-titled event for you to start putting information into. A separate way to create an event is to actually go to the time frame on your calendar that you want the event to occur. So if I didn't want it to start where this red line was, and that was the default for my create button, it just put it underneath that line, 
I could go and pick the time that I want. So if I wanted to go from 12 to 1.30, let's try that again. I can drag to the time that I want to begin and also stop. So I can put my title in here. So I'm going to just say meeting. And this is an event. And you can see that your date and time is here. We can change this if we need to. The other thing that we can do is if we want to change the date, we can go ahead and click on it and our calendar comes up. If we want to change the time, we can click on either one of those individually and change it as well. So if I want to change it from instead of 12 to 1, 30, 12 to 1, I could click on that. Um, I could also type in, if they don't have anything in the drop down menu, I can be even more specific. If I wanted to end at 1.15, I can actually type that in. Another cool feature is if this is an all day event and it's not a specific time, you have a checkbox where it says all day. If you click all day, it will go to the top of your calendar. So it will go to the top of the day and it won't be in a specific time slot. I'm gonna go uncheck that and go back to our normal time. This is not going to repeat, but you could have it going. So if it was a meeting that needed to repeat every week or even daily, you can schedule that here. And you can even go to custom so you can pick, it repeats how many weeks, days, months, or years, what day it repeats on, and then if is it ever going to end. So I know for teachers, we want things to end once summertime comes up a lot of the time if we have reoccurring meetings so if we want to put that date in, we could go ahead and say that it's going to end on and then we could put the actual date. You also have the option to end this after a certain number of occurrences. So if you know that you have a 20 week school year and you know you want to have the same meeting every single time on the same day each week for 20 weeks, you can go ahead and as you make the first one, you can put in 20 occurrences. And then that will happen every single time for 20 occurrences. Once those 20 weeks are up or those 20 occurrences are up, it will end. Next is add guests. And to add a guest, all you do is click and you can start typing the name of the guest that you would like to add. Name should come up. And you should be able to find that guest. Now, another part is, is if your calendar is connected with this person, you can find a free time inside of their calendar to actually meet. So I could actually look at Jen's calendar and find a time that works for both of us if she shared her calendar with me. If I want to add video conferencing through Google Meet to my calendar event, all I have to do is click this button. There is a drop down menu and I do have a, an add on for Zoom as well, but the default in Google is going to be Google Meet because it's their product. So if I want to add that information, all I have to do is click the button and then all of the information will come up. If you wanted to add a physical location, you can add rooms to this calendar event. If your organization has buildings and then rooms assigned already set up for you, you would be able to click on add rooms and then you would be able to see available rooms only or include unavailable rooms. And you'd be able to go through what building you'd like to go to. And then you can see what rooms are available for you during this time. If you needed to reserve a room, all you would do is click on that room. You can see that it is included here. And then if I go back to my calendar event, you can see I've selected this room for this meeting. If I want to go ahead and take it off because maybe I just don't want a physical room right now, I can go ahead and click this X. And that's the same thing with Google Meet. Anything that you want to take and get rid of, you can remove it just by clicking the X. You can also add a location, very similar to adding a room, and this is just going off of Google Maps. So now I'm gonna to go to more options. When I click on more options, it's gonna make this meeting card a lot bigger. I'm gonna be able to see a couple different options that I didn't see in the small card. 
you can see that everything from before is here. But one thing that I really like to see is that I'm able to add a description here below. So if I need to add more information, if I want to insert a hyperlink, or if I need to add an attachment, I can do that all in this area so that the people that are coming to my meeting or that I am meeting with have the information that they need. Maybe it's just something that I want to make sure that I have the file for at a specific time on a specific day. I can go ahead and attach that file into my calendar so that I have it ready and I just click on it and I'm able to access it at that time on that day. You can see adding guests is over here to the right and also our room assignment is over to the right if we wanted to have that. Once you are set, you can click save. And since I've invited my colleague Jen to this meeting, it's going to give us a pop-up that says, would you like to send invitation emails to Google Calendar guests? And yes, I do want to send that. So I'm going to click send. One last thing that I really like that I'm able to do in Google Calendar is that if I want to take something, take a meeting or take an event and assign it to another calendar, maybe a personal calendar or another school calendar that I have, I'm able to do that as well. I'm going to click on the event and I'm going to go to the snowman here, the three dots, and I'm able to click it and then I can print or duplicate it if I want to, but I'm also able to copy it to different calendars that I'm already connected to. So I can click on any of these and then save it to that particular calendar. And so now this event has doubled and it is now in my West Hill calendar as well as my OCM BOCES calendar. So those are the beginning steps at trying to master your Google Calendar.